Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back. We are going to continue with part two of our presentations of PCC2 weld repairs. There are 16 articles. We will continue to uh, work on those. To article 209, alternatives to post weld heat treating. Sometimes there are situations where you can't post weld heat treat pipe and the reason why you, you might have to do post weld heat treating is is usually a code issue or if you're um your well your welding's like chrome moly alloys and you and uh, you can't do it because the line is live for example and there's pressure in the line then you have to look at other ways to do this so um the most common way of doing it is a process called temper bead welding which was developed in the nuclear industry a long time ago and has been adapted for use for post weld heat treatment and basically you're tempering the welds each stage so it relies on a large number of sequences and special techniques to to uh, to balance the heat input and uh, so it's a very controlled disposition process. Article 210 has to do with in-service welding onto pressure, uh, pressurized carbon steel components or pipelines, and uh, which is necessary, okay? And basically the big concern is burning through when you're welding um, onto the pipe you have to make sure you have enough thickness in your wall that you can hold the pressure because you're increasing the heat locally when you weld onto the pipe. The second thing is you can have hydrogen cracking, uh, which is basically the presence of hydrogen in tensile stress. So you have to watch out the cooling rates. And uh, techniques like tempered bead welding are, are ways to, to control those uh, this concern number two. Now the limitations um, is it's just for really for carbon steel and, and it's not this this standard is not applicable to chrome moly or stainless steel the, this but there's some ideas here so it's it's primarily for carbon steel pipe or um, you know very specific microstructure so there there are a few types of procedure uh, procedures ones for fillet welds attachment welds and then for for well buildups in this procedure and it includes procedure qualifications and talks about the essential elements article 211 weld buildup weld overlay clad restoration there's a lot of, uh, of information in 211, but there are three sections. Weld overlay, corrosion resistant metal layer that's added on top. Uh, that can also be, in my interpretation, like a, a wear resistant material as well. Um, this is sort of geared towards the refineries, but you know, it can be adapted to mining. Um, then you have a weld buildup, which is the case where you're restoring, say, a worn out surface. And then you got another one where you're doing clad restoration. So you're re restoring resist corrosion resistant material over to the to the left and the bottom. You can see where we would be, you know, replacing uh, plate with uh, with a cladding. And we have a gap there after we weld. So we would add a plug like a, a restoration cladding over there. This is Article 212. It's for, Use, using weld patches using fillet welds, which are the welds along the edge of the plate. And basically it's similar to, to Article 207, but in this case it uses only fillet welds, whereas the other one was using plug welds. 
And uh, again, it's used for re uh, repairing a plate to match the component's original exterior. So you'd have to scan to get a more accurate dimension of the inside of the, the or the exterior surface uh, so that you can match your contour. That's probably the most difficult part. And then you're repairing uh, wall thinning, applicable to lots of shapes. And just like 207, there's a, a, a range from the minimum, minimum uh, ductility range all the way up to 650. The procedures are set for that. 15 has to do with threaded or welded plug repairs. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're removing a flaw defect through by drilling a hole or machining a hole and then uh, leak and pressure tightness is, is, is gained by inserting a solid or a threaded plug and seal or and seal welding. So you can you know put a put a pin in or thread it in and then seal weld it. This method may be used to gain access to opponent component or inside or outside for inspection. Is a guide to field heat treating vessels. And there, of course, there are a lot of hazards associated with heat treating of vessels. Uh, a tower, for example, could collapse uh, when you're heat treating because the, the yields, stress of the materials dropping. And so th this is a good guide to work from to, to pre pre prevent the chance of reducing you know, damage for, due to heat treating, which you may have to do if you can't avoid it. So, um, you know, because the, the issues are there's thermal expansion, local restraints and structures and supports and pipes, which can uh, averse, adversely affect the, the, um, the vessel um, when you are doing heat treating. There's issues like material degradation, like I talked about, about, you know, reducing of yields, changing of the local, changing of microstructure, making, maybe making it more corrosive. There are structural stability issues. Like I said, if, if you have a tower and the, and, uh, the skirt gets weak, it, it, could, it could fall, right? There's external supports, uh, and cranes and other considerations to consider. And, um, and of course, there's heat treatment controls that are discussed. Uh, and, and in the field, it's more difficult. And, basically some recommendations for examination and testing. A very good article. Most interesting articles that I've come across in this PCC is uh, Article 215, Welding Repair Considerations for Chrome Molly Vessels. Chrome Molly Vessels are difficult to, to, to weld because of the controls on the on the preheat, the interpass, and then the post-well heat treat or the dehydrinate, dehydrinization treatment. And this article goes through all the different kinds of failure modes that can occur, which you might see during a turnaround. Um, the most common one that I've had to deal with was something called skirt attachment welds. And there's been a great, API has written a great deal about this. And if you feel free to contact me if you're interested to find out more. There's also uh, main well seam failure. This would be due to temper embittlement, hydrogen assisted cracking, and hydrogen cracking. All very, you know, uh, big issues. So uh, we need a high level overview of, uh, it provides a high level overview of deterioration mechanisms. It, can, it talks on a high level about factors to be considered in the de development of a detailed repair plan. And it provides examples of damage, like in the figure to the left. It gives you a roadmap of where to start. Very good article. And, and it provides like repair methods. They're sort of a summarized. It gives you a roadmap where you should go to next. Article 216 is called welded hot taps in pressure equipment or pipelines. This is where, if you're not familiar, this is where we uh, weld a T or a fitting onto a pipeline or a pipe 
and then on, and then we use a special equipment called a hot tap machine and we drill a hole into the pipe and so this is the last section uh, pcc2 offers some advice about this section as well but bear in mind it's for carbon steel lines so they take into account things like flow rates inside this pipeline uh, that that you see to the bottom right and because th this will cool cool your welds down and then there's the tank level so if you're working on a tank you may use api 653 and you have to have a minimum tank level but you can't exceed a certain uh, high elevation for the tank without doing a calculation to make sure you don't overstress um, the the shell when you're doing the hot tap so there's another calculation called a burn through calculation that they go through and that's the case where you are welding onto this pipe to put that T on and you have to make sure that you have enough uh, material on your pipe that when you're welding you don't melt through the, the critical pressure envelope on the pipe and so uh, because the pipe when you're welding on the pipe it will it will weaken the pipe locally and you need to take that into account the second the, well the third one is called external pressure calculation and this is when uh, you're you're done welding on your T assembly and you need to pressure uh, pressurize your connection prior to tapping a hole into the pipe now the danger there is that when you pressurize it you, your pipe has to be thick your pipeline has to be thick enough so that you don't collapse your pipe locally there so and the last part has to do with with examination and the, all these codes are written in a lot more detail in api 2201 and uh, you know that's where you get the information for all the aspects of that and and this is a roadmap it'll it'll point you to there as well i hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you this was provided by athabasca engineering solutions we'd love to hear your feedback and and your thoughts on further videos and we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.